um, I'll call a meeting to order. Um, we're having a we're having our meeting on, on Zoom, and yep. it's uh, it's the regular monthly meeting of the historical commission, but we're on a, an unusual day <clears throat> because of other conflicts that we have. So, um, June, if you vanished lost, again, lost June again. She was on for a minute. I think she may have gone off and to try to come back in and get straight. Oh yeah, here uh, she, here yeah. she comes. Okay, June, if we can hear you, we can go on and, and um, forget about the video because we've got Okay, there she is. There she there is. There we go. Well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, welcome. <laughs> yeah, welcome, that's right. Um, uh, they, they have a long dissertation about how you're meeting on Zoom and everything else, but nobody else is here, so I'm not going to try to dissert dissertate. Um, uh, Last month's minutes, do we want to uh, deal with those? Is there a reason, is there any problem with them that we know of? No, I, I move to approve. And there's a second. And uh, all those in favor, Egg or I? Uh, June, June, I. And Elaine, I. Okay, I heard everybody. Yeah. Um, yes, June. I noticed that. Um, there was a place for minutes for our site visit, but I couldn't remember anything about what we said. <laughs> so I didn't write any. Do uh, you want me just to, just to make a, a couple of sentences that yeah. we were actually there? Okay. I can yeah, do just that. say that we were there and that we, we reviewed the uh, aspects of the preservation plan uh, as we moved through the building. That's all. Okay. And uh, I have since gotten the idea that that didn't even have to be a post. -it. Okay. So uh, my answer is that something like that is enough for the minute. Okay. So if we're not conducting business, we can do that. We can do stuff like that. Apparently. As long as we're <laughs> okay. we've, not making we've, any. We've always posted things like that, but apparently maybe not. Okay. Okay. Uh, we didn't make any decisions. Uh, we certainly talked about stuff, but we didn't lay out. We didn't lay out any decisions, so I think we're okay with that. <clears throat> okay. Um, the main thing we have, the main piece of business on our agenda for today, and it's really the only thing that I know of that's pressing, is the uh, weatherization uh, quote from Tim, and I believe that we need to vote to go ahead with it. Um, Okay, there's been a uh, there's been a a change in that. Um, I spoke with Tim earlier, you know, while yeah. while you were trying to get ready, and um, the cost of materials has skyrocketed, which I've been worried about. And he said oh. plywood, plywood has gone triple, and his his suggestion was to go with the the higher number. And he would probably have to eat some of that because of the new cost. Um, the, the higher number for ninety-one fifty. The ninety-one fifty. I was 91. calling him to to ask him a question because the numbers didn't add up in my head. Okay, and um, right. and he <laughs> said, and then he gave me the bad news. <laughs> yeah, I actually how, um, I had an OMEC board meeting yesterday and. Um, or whenever that was Tuesday, and that that was brought up that the plywood, especially Paul McKelk said, had tripled. Yes, yes, yeah, and that and um, anyway, he's absolutely in sticker shock on everything, and um, he said, you know, even at the ninety-one fifty, he may have to eat some of the cost, you know. So, um, that's, I'm that's gonna. I'm going to suggest that we approve it at that level, but I maybe we can do a change order. 
in the process and reduce the amount of plywood somehow? I, I don't know. I mean, let, let's well, just think about that. Well, we talked about grades and he might change the, the grade, you know, that he was planning on using yeah. okay, to keep it. To help it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I mean, we've got a piece of plywood there right now that's over one of those doors. Yeah, but it's going to work it's, on. It's deteriorating. Well, yeah, but it's still, a, I mean, its purpose as um, uh, you know, under this is simply to keep the weather out. And even though it's deteriorating, it's not going to be there for, for, you know, it's not for 50 years. And if it's there for two more years or something, so what? And um, I would think we can either use it there or over the back door, maybe. We can move it over there and save one piece of plywood. Well, I think the back door is going to need the good stuff because, um, you know, we're going to have a new window there and you want to protect that backside. There's going to be no door there. Not, you know, not a, not a good door there. So, um, and he's going, to do a, he's going to do a lot of work there around that as part of his package. And um, they, we've got to have good plywood there because the sun doesn't hit it at all. It depends on the season. Um, we don't know how long it's going to be there. <laughs> well, I know, I know, but I mean, seriously, all of this stuff, I mean, certainly the, the plywood over a door kind of thing is definitely temporary. Right. And therefore, uh, you know, we can discuss that with him uh, uh, when we were in process. Right. What, what we might have or what we might be able to find to to uh, help us with that co that cost issue. Um, well, also, so he he, he if, if it's possible, he would eat less. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Oh yeah. Exactly. Oh yeah. Exactly. That too. Yeah. That too. Exactly. Yeah. Just I to try, try to, to keep the whole thing reasonable. Exactly. So, I don't know. Yeah, we... I don't know that we've got any substantial pieces of plywood around. Otherwise, everything's scrappy and small. Um, but um, that, yeah, that's yeah, the piece that to comes that. to my mind. No, no. And yeah, if, yeah. especially if it's not too much in the public eye, we could use something that didn't look so good, but as long as it will protect the stuff under it like we want it to. Uh, so we can talk to him about that in, uh, after we've uh, got the contract done. Um, I did, I also spoke to him and uh, about the, uh, oh the issue of what was really included with the stuff around the south end of the house. And it's the area that he put the Tyvek on. It's, it's, where, it's, it's along the sill of the end of the house, away from the town hall, uh, where he put the Tyvek on. That's the area that he was talking about putting the plywood on there. And that's what I had originally thought when I first- So that's, that's the main house then? Yes, that's on the main house. Okay. Yeah, it, it's not about the other stuff. Uh, it's not about the annex. So, yeah. um, and that's something we do want done because that needs protection. Um, other than that, are there any other thoughts about the whole thing? No, I think we've lost a lot of time. It's unfortunate. I but, agree. Uh, I agree. But, but, uh, but you're right, because that still, is in good is in the best shape. Yeah, it's in good shape. Yeah, that one. And so we, we want to protect it. it. Want to keep it that way, right? That's right. That's so right. we don't want to pinch any pennies there, and because no. um, we we're not going to get to the siding. But I do have some thoughts. Um, it, it, do we want to? This is separate from this, but in the same uh, um, subject. But the um, do we want to take a vote on this to go with the ninety-one fifty due to the increased cost? I just have one more question, and that is time frame. Well, that's we're we've already slid on that today. Uh, tomorrow's the deadline, right, for it to be finished. I think. I can't that's remember. Probably. Yeah, I think tomorrow's the deadline for it to be finished. So, so what is your thought about? We'll, ha we'll have to come up with a mutually agreed upon with him. With once him. We, once yeah. we, once we present this to the uh, selectmen. So what's that the, should. What's the other figure? What other figure? 80, well, you said the 8450 or the 9150. Oh, okay. That's not five, six hundred dollars. No. That's no issue. 
That's no. no issue. No. I would yeah. move. I would move that we approve the uh, and propose the approval of the plan at at the ninety one fifty. And um, uh, I'll second that. Recommend we, it to the yeah. recommend it to the selectmen. Can yeah. we? Um, are you going to put in? Uh, uh, do we need language about a mutually agreed uh, completion uh, yes. date? Yes, and that the completion date will be modified. Uh, uh, based on, on the current situation and how long it will take. Yeah. Right. A mutually agreed completion date. You want me to work that up for Margaret? Yeah. Do the, do the, does the select board have to be part of that timing decision? Or can we just agree with Tim? Um, I think Margaret would have to be notified because she's going to be handling the. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I'm assuming that Margaret's going to negotiate that with her. Yeah, we'll do. Yeah, we'll do a to be determined um, mm -hmm. completion date. And Margaret can talk to him and perhaps get that done before she goes to the selectmen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, June, are you comfortable that you have the motion? So move to approve the weatherization RFQ uh, with a mutually agreed completion date. Okay, but you name the amount of the 9150. Oh, right. That's the most important. <laughs> right. <Okay. laughs> move to approve uh, in the amount of, okay, 9150. Move to approve weatherization RFQ in the amount of 9150 uh, with a mutually agreed completion date. Uh, change the uh, take the RF out. It's just it's a quote. The RFQ okay. is is the request for a quote. Oh, okay. So the weatherization. Out, so it's the weatherization quote. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. The actual quote from Squaw Hollow. From Squaw Hollow Restorations or whatever. Okay. I'll ask you to vote A to ride. Uh, June I. Elaine I. Unanimous vote in favor. Okay, while we're on that subject of the of um, stuff to be done. Um, I was re-reviewing um, Tim's um, recommendations, you know, for the Bullard House. Yeah. yeah. And um, one of the things that he he said about opening up the floors, you know, the estimated cost of opening up the repaired floors, so he could see the rest of what of what the condition of the the building is. That section is on page five of his. Um, survey and yeah. um okay and the estimated cost of that was twenty five hundred dollars okay to do to do that and you know do the report on that okay um because the some time back when i spoke with him you know we talked about the foundation and the sills and he said he had talked to a number of people regarding the foundation and he doesn't think that people would quote it because of the condition of the sills. That when you raise the house even a little bit, all that's gonna fall apart. So um, my thought is that we go with, we go with him doing the, the final exploration, okay? Um, in the opening of the, re the repaired floors at the ground level, you know, beyond the scope of, you know, what he could see from down below. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, at some point this summer, I can work up an RFQ for him to do that work. So we know exactly the condition of everything under there. Okay. And, um, and then because the sill work at the moment is only at sixteen hundred dollars, okay? And I yeah. think, I think that the balance. Oh, I wrote this down somewhere.
anyway, with the money we've expended and the money we're about to expend, and um, I think there's enough money, there's, it'll be still enough money in that town fund to um, do the sills, okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd have to go out for bids on that because that's more than the $10,000. Um, but at least then we'd have a complete picture. You see what I'm Let saying? If we how, do much did you, how much did you say the sill work was? Um, he has here 16,000. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay, 16,000 for the sills. Okay. It's the foundation work that's so expensive. And Oh, I know but, that. But if we but can get want, But if we can get the, his survey done, you know, the rest of his survey finished, okay, by opening up the floors at the cost of $2,500. Um, and then get the sill work done, it's, it, it may be more than 16,000, but they, I still think there's enough money there. Was it 32 some odd thousand will be left um, after we pay out all this money, okay? okay. And then by then, by, if we have all that done, then we have the CPAC money coming up where we can do the foundation work that needs to be done, okay? So we can do, you know, keep things moving yeah. Um, yeah. By the time that money is ready. Does that sound reasonable? I mean, I, it's a good way to do it because it's just going to get more expensive. Well, I, I, I agree. And, and I, I love the idea of doing the sill work. Um, right. uh, and that's the big thing I want Tim to do anyway. That's that's his daily work. I, I, you know, I, 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 have really a list of, I have a list of contractors, you know, that we can we can um, <clears throat> send for bids and yeah. um, I'm fairly confident that Tim would be the best price without even, you know, just, just okay. in our past yeah. experience and other yeah. people's past experience. Yeah. Um, I may be wrong on that, but um, it's not cheap. <laughs> no, know? it's not cheap. It's not and, cheap. And, and uh, some of the quotes that we got for this place years ago were staggering. <laughs> and um, so, and I know, you know, other people too, but, um, all right, so, I've got another. You, I've I've got another take on the floor exploration business. Yeah, Tim's going to be here doing some of this other work. Yeah, and as far as taking up the floors, in the stuff that he needs to look at, I mean, a lot of it is just unscrewing some plywood and taking up some sheets. Yeah, but it's his time. You know, it's his time. Oh, oh, yeah. But I mean, if we have, if we when he's here. We can open it up and this and that. We can perhaps get a uh, maybe even a little better quote from him on on doing that piece. See, a whole bunch of this has all been done new. I know, I know. But some of the stuff that was done new, like you know the L, okay? Yeah. You know when you put the foundation under that, that's pulling away from the house. Nobody connected that to the house. Nobody connected that wall. I know that I know that there's a there's a a gulf there that needs to yeah. be taken care of. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we don't know underneath, you know, given settling and and everything else and you know drainage problems, we don't know exactly exactly what we need to know. I mean, we can't cut a corner on this. We need to know. That is all examinable underneath. You don't have to tear anything apart to get to that. You can get in under that area and see that all. You don't have to tear it apart. You can't see. You can't see underneath um, where all that new stuff is, right? There, there's an opening on the on the side, I believe, that has uh, plywood. The side uh, facing. The side facing the, uh, the Von Geldern's. There isn't uh, when I was out there the other day. It seemed to me there was a a, a plywood cover. Yeah. For access to yeah. the work that Litchwell did, um, mm -hmm. uh, that would face the Von Geldern's. I would think that you. Um, could, no. Could, well. There's a very adequate crawl, crawl space to get in there. And I showed him all of that before. And so it's under the kitchen floor that he hasn't seen, which- Under the kitchen floor and underneath the- uh, easy. The back corner of the house. 
the and back, under back. the and the, the the entrance room floor. Right. He hasn't. And, he, hasn't he hasn't seen that. No, he hasn't. But That's I know it's all about. good. I know it's all good. And and as I say, all we have to do is take up some plywood so we can see it. Of course, uh, see, he's got to see the whole still. He's got to see the whole still because it's all piecemeal. That that side is all, right. all piecemeal. So it's either. I, I honestly don't get it. We've had all that work done. It was all done to the satisfaction of the building inspector mm -hmm. and certified thereby. Mm -hmm. Why do we have to fight about this? I'm not fighting about it. I'm just saying what's in his report. He still needs to see. How about we could he decide we don't need that because we know that the building inspector already inspected it all no. and said it was fine. Uh, well, look. We're always going to differ on this, Barry. Um, okay, then I vote no on that part. That's all. And so no means no. And so no we'll means see no. what June, has, June decides to do. Well, as you know, I don't purport to be expert in any of this end of things. There are m many things I can do for us that that I think I'm, I'm, you know, strong in, but this is not one of them. I, I mean, it clearly says here that the detailed information would include condition of remaining original material and the suitability of timber, hardware, and masonry supports that have been added. You don't know if, you don't know if they added There is things. no original timber in that area. All that stuff's been replaced most of it since we've owned the house. And how was it joined to what was left, left of the original timber? There wasn't any. I mean, it was, I mean, at the bottom of the house, there wasn't any. Isn't it possible to air this with Tim himself? Well, I think we could, and that's part of my thought is that we discuss all of this with him when he's on site doing the other job. That's what I, that's what I recommend too. I, that was going to be my next recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. See if we can see if we can do enough to satisfy him on that stuff so that we can move on. I want his information on the old house and what's left of it. And none of that stuff is left. But so we can, what, we can discuss that further with him when he's when there. When we're there, on site, on site. Yeah, yeah. yeah. much and, more useful. Yes, yep. And I did I did mention that to him that, you know, we might be visiting him when oh, he, yeah. you know, to discuss this. Yeah. But, um, but you like that plan of attack at least that um, we can move on to the sills? Oh, definitely. Okay. But and, most of the sill work is in the front of the house and we know about that and we've known for a long time we need it. Right, right. But if we can, if time permitting, um, I can work up an RFQ for the sill work. Mm -hmm. Okay, once Tim is done there, okay, and I have more of his input. Um, we'll get going on that. So because it's going to take a while, and it would be nice mm -hmm. if we could um, get that get done some, in this season before next winter. I was thinking get something going by fall. You know, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if that's possible <clears throat> with all of the meeting interruptions and all this other stuff. You know, um, yeah. but um, that's my plan. I'm I'm out straight from here on through oh, to sure. June to June, but yeah. after yeah. that, it settles down a little bit. I hope, yeah. and um, and by then we'll have met with him maybe and yeah, okay, yeah. okay. That's so fine. okay. So yeah. I think June? that'll, okay, go ahead. June? June. Um, I was, had to bring out the dog 
So I missed, I'd like a summary of um, the first thing that I have down here, which is asking Tim uh, to do the exploration of, this, of the uh, conditions of, this, of the sills. Is, so what, what came of that? Um, we're gonna, when he's on site, we're gonna talk to him about that. And um, so we agreed to discuss with Tim right. on site when right. he is there for the weatherization. Yes. Yeah. And and I would change that sills to the floor structures. Yeah, floor regarding st the floor structure, not the sills. Yeah, yeah, floor structures in the part that he couldn't get to before. Right. In other words, the stuff that's not in the cellar. There's one room, which is the gallery, which we've never had that floor up, and you can't get to that floor any other way. And I don't know if he wants to tear that up to look under there or not, but that's, uh, uh, I don't know whether maybe from the cellar he can see something there. I don't know the answer. He said, he said he's seen everything he can from the cellar. He, yeah. needs, to, he needs to look under the floor. Oh yeah, I understand that, but I, I my point is that that one room is not something that we have torn up and it's not going to be easy to tear up. And so that could be, that's the place that could be an issue. Now you're calling the gallery the entrance room or the, no, the, the, the dining room? room? The other, the, the, what you might call the dining room, the dining other room end ramp. of the ramp. Oh, the other okay. end of the ramp. Yeah. There's a little china closet in the corner. Right. And yeah. Uh, yeah. where the chimney is, where the yeah. chimney is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, that one room, we really don't know what's under there at all. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's got to that's be part of our, you know, package, I guess. Yeah. And that, that may increase, well, that may, in, may, I think anything extra is going to bump that cost up. And hopefully it's still within the realm of money that we have left. That we have now. Yeah. yeah. But I, I love the idea of getting the sill work done with the money we have now. Right, right. And then what are you, uh, um, what are you planning on doing with the, um, the donations in the, uh, in the historical society? I know that's all separate, but the donations that were made um, for repairs to the Bullard House or whatever, were you planning on using that to work in the interior? to do finish work in the interior? Well, we were, I was hoping, I was hoping to use the existing money to finish the entrance room. What existing money? The, the town has? No, the, 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 the historical society has. Donation money. Yeah, but I'll tell you something. I'm very much opposed to giving the money to the town and letting Margaret in. Oh, no, no. See, I want the historical society, I want the historical commission to approve a plan right. for work and the historical society to, to contract with it, get the work done and, and, and complete yeah. the thing because I don't want it to be public money and have to do it at prevailing wage. It's, we can't do donation. that. It's a town building. But the town, it's not the town's money. They, it's a gift to the town. It's a gift to the town. The historical commission would have to approve the work to be done. And we allow the historical society to contract and get it done. It's not the town's, you know, it's a gift to the town. It's like they, if they bought a refrigerator and gave it to the town. Only well, I, buying, I, buying some work. The only thing that's left to do in that room is lay the floor and uh, do a counter and cupboards and uh, mop boards and that kind of stuff. That's what's left to do. And some painting, but the painting is being done by volunteers anyway. All the painting has been done by volunteers anyway. <clears throat> but that's that's my plan for the money that the historical society currently has in donation and if we're not allowed to do that i don't see any reason why anybody should donate anymore because you're doubling the cost of what 
of the bang for your buck. If it's public money, then that's the rules. But this isn't public money. This is private money and, and a gift to the town. Now, if Margaret's going to fight us on that too much, then forget it. I, I, I'm just not willing to do this stuff anymore and have it cost twice as much. If it's public, if it's public money, town money, then those are the rules and that's how we do it. And certainly for big structural things, that's the way that stuff is going to be done. Um. Yeah, and it's beyond volunteers. Yeah, you can't ask volunteers to do that kind of work. Well, yes, you can. If the, I mean, not saying anything, but if you had a volunteer like Paul McCall, yes, you can trust him to do the work. Uh, we paid uh, Rick Kramer, who's a registered contractor, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, to do. Uh, the, the uh, finished work, uh, window casings and door casings and that kind of uh, uh, woodwork in the room. Uh -huh. We paid him to do that. And that would be my suggestion would be to back to him to do this other stuff. Um, because he's very good. The flooring and the... Yeah, the flooring and the cupboards and the, and the, and the, the mop board and stuff. We, we didn't finish the woodwork because we had to get the floor done. We were going to do that with volunteers, but that seems to be past the, at the moment. So that's another fight. I'm just, all we got to do is put the floor down and, and nail it. So I don't see it's a big issue. Yeah. But, well, we don't want to do that right now, though, until we have the other stuff done. Not if we've still got the thing in the air about Tim looking under the floors. No. Right. Right. Okay. I, I mean, I'd wait on that for a little yeah. bit more now. Yeah. Um. Well, maybe we can negotiate something in the yeah. realm of in the realm of reasonableness. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, what has been decided or agreed upon here? It, just, that, discussed, just discussed. Just to discuss with Tim on site when he is yeah. performing yeah. the weatherization. Just right. to discuss with him. Um, the further determination from his, um, let me see, I can give you the section. Let's see what section is it under. Mm -hmm. Under his recommendations, um, his estimated cost of, um, $2,500, you know, for opening up the repaired, the repaired floors. So he can, so he can have a better look at the, uh, Structure. the timbers and the masonry supports. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> all we've agreed is to ask him, if, if the discussion with him won't involve him actually taking up the floors. No, no. It's just it's no. just to ask him if to define it for what. us. Yeah, just to define it for us. Which means where or exactly where and what. Yeah. I don't know that your minutes need to be in great detail in this. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I just wanted to understand. This is it. about this is about un, uh, uh, examining his examining the floor structure under right. the things that have been under the air in the areas which he cannot access. Right. I think what below. we ought to, I think what we ought to do, okay, mm -hmm. when he's there mm -hmm. is to have this with us, you know, the his uh, Oh yeah. Because I have other questions about reinforcing the vaulted ceiling, et cetera, et cetera. And those could be all smaller jobs, you know, the that we can take individually, mm -hmm. and and you know small amounts of money, depending on where we stand. Um, yeah. After the after the uh, yeah. timbers. Yeah. Okay, and I'll and I'll need that information anyway in doing an RFQ. Okay, for oh, the yeah. for the timber work. Okay. All right. 
I think that's all I had. Uh, well, yeah, okay. I have one other thing. <laughs> we got to get the house emptied. How are we going to do that? And where? where is it going to go? Well, that continues to be a, a matter of consideration. We've got the the fire station and we've got the maybe the West School. And I guess that's where the stuff is going to go. Um, Were you able to move any more stuff out um, since we last we did our last round? No, I don't think so. I don't think we've moved anything out. Uh, June and I worked extensively on the newspapers the historical, the older historical newspapers. Mm -hmm. And we've sorted a lot of those out and boxed them. And we've got a little bit more to do with that, but uh, we've really accomplished great things in that regard. And those will go up to the uh, curatorial building, okay. probably go up on the top shelves. And that is, that's just been an issue of stuff that's been sitting there for years. And we've really made good, pretty good sense out of it at this point. Good. Um, so that's that's the piece that we worked on uh, since the since we were in there and moved the other stuff before. And there are some more things there that I'm going to try to move up into the into the curatorial building that came from the same sources as the ones we moved before. Okay. And and then we'll work on some more of it. Yeah. Um, but we also have to. I've got to go have a heart to heart with uh, 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 Bobby Rainville maybe Roger Bradley and see just where they are and, and uh, trying to figure it out. The other thing that has been suggested to me, <clears throat> and this is a historic preservation question, but it's related to all of this, is that um, uh, we need as a historical commission to kind of do a survey of current town buildings that we have historical interest in and concerns about. Um, it isn't all about how old it is, but it's how important it is to the town's history. And I think that uh, mm -hmm. the West School obviously is one of the things that we do have that kind of a concern about. And therefore, that's kind of a piece of what I'm thinking about in talking to, in talking to those guys is what's their, uh, what's their, uh, uh, what's their take, you know, what are they thinking about for the Legion? And do we need to be looking ahead on that? And secondly, what does the building need? Because we should be working on things that we're concerned about in terms of town buildings so that we have uh, some plans or some suggestions for plans for you to take to the um, uh, CPA committee. In other words, what might be long term okay. things that, um, that, that we would want to see CPA funds spent for in historic preservation. Yeah, the um, excuse me just a second. Yeah. <clears throat> the um, I mean, I know one, that of, we one of my other concerns that I had on my. <clears throat> Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, oh no! Um, in in light in light of all that, the um, the different um, things that the uh, selectmen have asked us, we can't lose sight of that. You know, they need to ensure the town's collection, and um, we need to have a, we need to have a better handle on what we're actually keeping. You know, what we have in storage. We have, we have to be able to put a dollar amount on that somehow and some sort of an inventory, you know, a general inventory um, with details, you know, further into the records. But um, it's going to be a, a main um, contest, I think, in trying to get that done, don't you think? Um, they're going to press us for us at some point. Um, <clears throat> but we've, we've always taken the view. I mean, what's the point of spending all this money? To... That the value of the collection 
is is most things in it the monetary value is not that great and therefore it didn't make sense to worry too much about that uh there certainly are items that we uh um, among the antiques that have some value although furniture has gone way down in the in the general market nowadays compared to what it was some few years ago um <clears throat> but we do have you know a couple of paintings and we have one that we're about to acquire that is right. going to have a little value. That's what reminded me. <clears throat> and and we've got two right now that have definite significant value and and uh, one that might, but it's got a lot of work to be done on it in order to have to come up in its value. Um, so we have those things that and paintings <clears throat> seem to appreciate mostly. Uh, if they have any value, they seem to appreciate. Uh, that doesn't seem to be one that the, the market falls at the bottom, but falls out on. Um, there are, you know, there's various other objects, but I think we could make a list of some of those objects that I would consider really insurable. The most important. Uh, yeah, and 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 finance and and sometimes the things that are most important to us historically are not terribly valuable. Uh, most of our documents, for instance, are not very much value in terms of money because there's no famous sig people's signatures and all the kinds of things that make those go up in value. But they're inestimable value to the town. But they, you can't put a dollar amount on that, that that is very useful. I mean, you can put $2,000 on it or something, but that's, you know, that's not much value. <clears throat> but yes, I mean, part of what we're doing what June and I have been working on very hard ever since we moved down to um, uh, the town offices is just listing a lot of stuff. And those lists can be used to work on the kind of thing you're talking about. And that's, I, you know, I mean, those are things that, and, and of course we have a loads, loads of things that were listed before too. Um, but those are, uh, and the other thing we have to sort out carefully is what's, Town documents that aren't necessarily ours, even if we're caring for them, and things that are historical collection, definitely historical collection stuff. Because uh, for years we took care of most of the records, but now most of the records, early records and that kind of stuff, are in the town in the big vault. Now that we have the town, the town offices in the big vault, we have, uh, you know. Yep. Most of that's back okay. in the. So that doesn't come in, under. In the immediate custody of the town clerk again. Hello. Yeah, that doesn't come under our bailiwick. Uh, no. I mean, on an informal basis, the, the society has, has cared for a lot of that stuff for the town. But it, on a formal basis, the historical commission they're, they're really in the care of the town clerk. Uh, we we would function to help her in that regard. Yeah. And if people want those kinds of documents, she talks to me and I help her, you know, get them and, and deal with them. But uh, uh, I have a question for you on the uh, the computer that you enter all of the uh, items in into Bonk, Bonk is to the, the society. Yeah, but um, is still there a, a meeting? Print, is there a printout that we could Drive. have of what's in that? Yep. Is there is there a is there a condensed database that you can print from that so that we could store it in the vault, you know, um, to back up what we have for a collection? Um, uh, to date, we've never made a printout of it. Uh, it's really only a small part of the collection. Um, there's so very much more that can be added and put in there, but it takes so much time that, you know, sometimes you work on it for a while, but then you go on and say, if I keep doing this, I won't get anything else done. So um, it, that's a definite, I mean, the answer is, I'm sure we can produce a printout of what's in there. I've never tried to do that. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we have got is, um, uh, a hard, drive, an external hard drive you can plug in and save everything to. Mm -hmm. uh, 
as a backup. And we haven't mm -hmm. done that for a while. We have done it in the past at some point, but we we really need to do that again. And that can be put in another place. Um, yeah, someplace separate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That that that's easy to do. Uh, June. Yeah, I, I'm not sure the printout would be useful, but definitely the hard drive should be stored somewhere else in the vault yeah. or whatever. Yeah. When we did it, we had, I think we have two of those. And the plan originally was that we'd, one of them would be a backup that you'd, you know, once a year you'd take out and back it up into it and put it away in the vault. And the other one would be one that you'd use more frequently. And, so, and, and it might even be on the same site, but or it might be something that somebody takes home and just to have it in a different place. Uh, June? I don't know if this would be a very popular uh, suggestion with you, Barry, but someone, we need someone dedicated just to that, just to pass perfect. Someone oh. other, other than you, you know. Yes, I agree with that. And I can see how tedious the work is, and I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I mean, I, I don't mind learning how to do it, but, um, but we need somebody else. We need a different person. And when, we first, when we first got the thing, we had two or three people and they worked at it for, I mean, Almer and, and uh, uh, Edie got about half of the irons into that. And then they just stopped and didn't want to do anymore. Well, and because it's boring. Yeah. And you know, I had, I had, uh, I, I thought Marsha was going to do books. She's never been willing to even try. Yeah. Well, I think as hateful as this may sound, I think you might have to pay somebody to do it. Because we are so behind and I'm not, I'm not, oh, yeah. I'm not laying blame at anybody. I'm just saying we I know. collectively, we are so behind that it requires, I mean, I feel responsible uh, in some ways that we are so behind and there's no, there's no way out of it, but no. to get help and maybe to pay for it in some cases, which I know is what not- What about a town volunteer? That's possible. We can we can work on that. See who's around that might do something like that. But you I mean agree. I the, agree. It's, someone it's, on the work off program yeah. that would do that for tax credit. Right. Yeah. I mean that's right. certainly something we can look into. You got to have somebody. That's that's a really big got, job. Yeah, I've got somebody that's doing the doing some work for me uh, for the cemetery commission right now. And he's, you know, it's very good with this kind of stuff with, with computers and stuff. And I don't know, I mean, I'll talk to him sometime maybe and see whether it's something he'd like to do some of. And um, I, I've got Bob Roach who's volunteered to do some stuff uh, otherwise. Um, and maybe, and he's somebody that's got the background for, you know. So the, the background for the, tech for the tech side, but not necessarily the background for the historical side. I mean, there's so many questions that are, when you're putting that stuff in, there's so many questions to answer. They aren't all easy, they aren't easy to answer for, for me or, or June or you know anybody, but uh, at the same time, for somebody that really doesn't have any background for old stuff, uh, it, it really, it means somebody else is gonna sit there and feed it to them kind of. And that's not that's not an efficient thing either. But if we got somebody started in it, they they will develop some of the understanding of what to do. The other thing is that this whole sections of materials, for instance, the irons, we've got a list of them. And we've got the information. And if they look at what's been done already, I think that somebody could pick that up and do it quite easily from the list. Um, and that's something that they don't wouldn't have to have a lot more knowledge to do because it's already the research has been done and the things are identified. And that's really a matter of just putting oh, the yeah. list in. And the, there are some there are a few jobs like that that somebody could do. 
And I did some of the uh, law books myself, partly as a chance to figure out how to do that stuff. And uh, I haven't, I've done enough with that so I could teach somebody to do that and have them go through and do some more of them. And they wouldn't have to learn, they wouldn't have to have somebody at their elbow if they are working within a certain field that you've got them set in. So I, I, it's not impossible to get some people to work on some of these things. I agree. And it's been a while since we've asked anybody to work on anything. So. Well, there, as you've pointed out, there are layers of information that that can be added, but just a, but um, a person with an intelligent person who has an interest in preservation could make the entries, the basic entries. It just wouldn't have the other layered information in it. I don't, I'm not sure how skeletal you can be and, and then go on to another item, but whatever that basic level is, that, that, that is probably what should be addressed. I, I agree with you, but the piece that's really hard is the nomenclature. There's an established nomenclature in the system. And you can right. add to it, but you gotta be careful about adding it to it because it may already be there. It's just words you haven't thought of. Yeah. And um, that's why I say in terms of putting somebody else into it, it would be great if you had a group of items that were of similar nature so that the nomenclature, you can get that straight and they can just work through that pile. But if you're working through uh, uh, a, a, a disparate group of items that are a list of things that we own and that we've acquired over the years, even the things that we get in current uh, gifts, which are very different kinds of things, it's tedious to get figured out what you call each one of them and as you go mm -hmm. from one to the other. So I, as I say, the best way to get somebody else doing it is to have a group of things that are of similar nature so they don't have to do a lot of that kind of stuff. They can go through and do what you suggest, the basic input, without a whole bunch of other stuff. And if we get somebody that's really hot with it, we can get somebody who will measure them and put the measurements in and those kinds of things. I mean, somebody can do those. Well, I think- Different, I different think ways that, to go at it. Right, I, I agree. Depending on the person's expertise, it would be, it might be necessary to have someone with, with past perfect um, experience. I mean, you wouldn't have to pay them forever, but <laughs> this is not something we can accomplish I mean, I know that you don't have to do everything all at once. It, and, you know, you have to think of a reasonable length of time to accomplish something. But, but you, <laughs> it, might, it might be necessary to have someone with some actual experience in past perfect. Oh, that would be a very, obviously, that would be very helpful. And you might have to, you know, what you need to pay for that might be more than you want to pay. <laughs> and maybe with the select men pressuring us on some stuff, we should say, and how much money do you want to give us so we can accomplish this? Well, you know, yeah. that's a that's a priority. We have, we have you to know. Yeah, we have to consider all those things. Right. Um, I I had a building permit or two that I've dealt with lately that are, you know, it's new construction stuff. It has nothing to do with anything that we're, we're concerned about. Um, not much else in that department. Um, uh, I don't know. And the, uh, 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 June, would you say something about the moving of stuff moving the collection yeah i reached out to bob blair and to scott hawkins um both of whom volunteered to help with move stuff 
Bob Blair has an open truck that can accommodate the higher shelving. Um, and Scott and Ross are younger and fit enough to move things that are very hot, would be almost impossible for us to move without, <laughs> without hurting ourselves. Um, and so that that's gonna happen as far as I know um, at 8.30 on May 1st. The other thing that might happen, um, I did ask Marsha again, if we could um, use the open trailer that they have for their motorcycles and other things so that we could, we, we could use wheelbarrows to, to um, move the flat irons. The wheelbarrows would, would be wheeled onto the, that open trailer and then uh, we could, until we get to the curatorial building and then, then they would be there. Are they in boxes now? No, no the flat iron collection that needs to be moved is on shelving Shelves. in room okay. 113. The other irons that we aren't, that are not numbered and are not critical are still in the Bullard house. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But the, the ones in room 113 are all numbered and tagged. And I thought all of those were in past perfect, but maybe not all of them. No, half of them, about half, half of them. them. Okay, half of them. But anyway, uh, those are worthy to go into the uh, curatorial building. Those things are too heavy to move in boxes. And when we moved them down there, we put them in a couple of wheelbarrows and did it, but the wheelbarrows were too heavily laden to be handled safely. Too so tippy, did, yeah. Yeah, and so we, we did do it, but it would be better to have about four wheelbarrows to do it with and spread it out more. But the big what thing, of the wheelbarrows enable us to take them off the shelf and put it in the wheelbarrow, move it in that form, and then put the wheelbarrow there and put them back on the shelf up in the other place. What, if, what about uh, using a hand truck, you know, putting them in uh, tubs that you can stack up and put them in a hand truck? The they're heavy. <laughs> oh, I know they are. Yeah. I know they are. Yeah. Well, they. But, ha You'd have but to use like, small tubs, I guess. Right. Which you we know, don't have. In I mean, either case, the wheelbarrow thing isn't an issue. The big thing is that you need a uh, something to move it in that has a ramp and it's not up too high. You can't put it up. In, I mean, it's it's really difficult to get them up into a, into a, even a pickup truck because you've got to lift the thing somehow. And if you've got a, a, a low trailer, like a, a mower trailer or something, or a motorcycle trailer and you put the ramp down you can just roll them right up onto the trailer and that's how we move them down there and it worked just great it's possible that um the only thing that marcia said to me was that she definitely couldn't do may 1st which is why i've made the other arrangement but it's possible on may 8th but i don't feel comfortable asking her again um so we'll just have to see about May 8th. We'll just have to continue to work our way through it. Yeah. Um, and we'll... Uh, but the things that will be moved on May 1st would be the remaining glass cabinet, which is the smaller of the two, mm -hmm. the boxes of books, which there are now at least eight boxes of books that are very heavy or too heavy for, that. for us. Yeah. And what else? The, the shelving that the irons sit on? I had hoped to do that. So we would- and we'll, we'll have to keep trying to figure out how we can get the irons moved at the same, in approximately the same time. Well, it won't be with Marsha because that day won't work for me. I understand that it won't be with Marsha. Yeah, okay. Uh, we also, uh, we also can move some of the other off as long as we've decided where it's going. I'm, I'm talking about those two big wooden tables and uh, <clears throat> the architectural models and the, um, uh, uh, you know, some of the other things that way. 
and if we've got we need to get stuff in line if that's going to go to the west school we need to get that arranged and figure out how we can do that because that that's another that and some of the other stuff that's on the other shelves that's going to the fire station or whatever those things could be moved that day too and with a little other planning we could also perhaps move some of the stuff that's in the uh that's up in the attic of the town offices up over the police station so all of those things are things we could move on that day if we I mean, you as gonna, much, much as we have time for where are you going to move those to the fire station i had originally planned to move those to the fire station um but if we have the West School available and so forth, we might put some of it there rather than the fire station. Yeah. Well, we've only got a, a week now to figure okay. this out. So, so we'll, that's what we've got to do is figure it out. But those are things that we can be moving. And we've also got some other furniture that can go to the curatorial building too. So I know that we're going to have to have highway come back because we've got the big heavy file cabinets to move, the very heavy file cabinets to move, and they can do that. Um, and uh, they have the facility to do it. And the last time they took the file cabinets, they put them in the, in the scoop of the loader, the town's uh, highway loader. And that was just neat as a whistle for handling those very heavy file cabinets. So they, that's definitely a job for them. And we'll be having them do that when we can. Um, as soon as we've got these, the things moved that we just talked about on the eight, on the first or the eighth, uh, then we could arrange to have highway come and do the other, because then we'll have almost all the big things into the building, and we won't have. Uh, we can we can then move the file cabinets because it's not going to affect our getting stuff in there as much. At any rate, we are working on it, and we'll uh, we've got to do some more arrangements this week in order to make the most out of the out of the uh, people that will come and work on the first. And maybe if that works well with those folks, we can get them for another date, you know, and do it in smaller pieces. So that's another good idea. Um, when do you think? When do you think everything will be out of the historic room? It all depends on when we can get people to come and do the move to that move. Yeah. Uh, well, highway highway will be the last piece. So I would. It may be, but we may actually have the art shelves to do after that. I'm not sure. The what? The yeah. art shelves. The, the shelves way. that have the art and the maps and those things on. Uh, because we have to take that apart. We have to take everything off it and sort it. And we have to take uh take that apart into two sections in order to move it they can be moved by ordinary people but you you still need a vehicle that can take the the tall thing where's that unit going to go in the uh you're in the going straight straight in front of the door when you go in oh okay and part of the reason of that is that the space for the swing of the door will also be space you can pull those flat things out into when you're inside uh, that that's placed there so we'd have maximum uh, ability to get things out uh, where it is right now it's been really hard sliding things in and out because we didn't have any space in front of it so uh, this uh, one of the things that we've got well planned for the new place is that, that yeah. will be, be very good but it's since it's in front of the door it's one of the last things we want to do because moving big things by it would be a little difficult yeah but we've got almost all the other big things in there once yeah. we've done this next thing. Yeah. So yeah. therefore, it won't. It isn't too far off that we could do that. Um. <clears throat> so with the, with the nice weather. Um, oh yeah. I, was, I hate to bring this up again, but the the Hearst House. Anything on that? I mean, that'd be ideal to get that done in the nice weather. I couldn't agree more. Um, At least get the foundation ready and. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, um, okay. We'll put that right on the top of our agenda once we get the move done. Right. We've got to get the move done. Good, good. Yep. Well, that's right. why I just wanted get to keep it out, out of there. our head. 
No, right. you're right. Absolutely right. right. And I, I had it in my mind. I was over there in the cemetery this week, and I had it in my mind then too. And we might be able to <clears throat> we might be able to nail Tim down when we talk to him, you know, to give us a, a better range of uh, yeah. price. Okay. That's really the thing. We can tie that all together and get that done. You know, we people have got to see progress. Yeah. <laughs> but you can't. I think Tim has to agree with us that we can't raise more money without a ceiling. It's right. just not. It's just not good fundraising uh, strategy at all. Right. I mean, I've I've but talked about this to yeah, you know, people that have raised a lot of money and. That, we, that we, that meeting that you and I had with him and it went very well and we were feeling very good about it and we came to the end to talk about that very issue and he ducked it again. <clears throat> well, I, I think you've got a lot of unknowns now with the stuff having been stored so long. Am I right? Uh, yes, that's definitely so. That's definitely so. Yeah. And, and we do want to get that off the bullet house grounds. As I reflect on the pile of stuff that we pulled apart and messed with, I'm very concerned about I think some of that stuff was more deteriorated than we realized at the time. So I, some of it, some of it. So um, yes, that, that that is a very significant concern. Are there other issues? Is there a motion to adjourn? Don't Realizing move. that that doesn't put an end to several of the things that we've got on our table. <laughs> Um, oh, um, that painting that came in. Oh, All yeah. right, it's going to come in. Yeah. What did yeah. the What did the How did that come about? Uh, how did that come about? An inquiry was sent to the selectmen's office, and the selectmen referred it to the historical commission, and it's a Hastings relative. It's somebody that Timothy has met. Um, and uh, the person involved never lived in Berlin, but was a son of somebody who grew up in Berlin that was in part of the uh, Hastings family at Indian Head Farm. And um, uh, she offered us the painting. And were we interested? And so she sent us the picture and I said, replied, absolutely, we'd be delighted. It's, it's unusual. It's, I will say this, it's a, it's a painting that's going to have some monetary value because yes. people love portraits of children. So children's portraits are very, very, uh, get a lot of interest. So, uh, yeah, and she has gone to Florida for like, I don't know, three weeks or a month or something. And after she gets back, she's going to contact us about transferring. Great. And uh, that's how we left it. And I, I just think that she was going within a day or two. And I said, well, why don't you contact, get in touch with it? He, she was very pleased to hear that we would take it and um, that we'd be interested in it and so forth. So that's uh, that one awaits her return from Florida. And then I expect you'll see it fairly soon. Right. And that, yeah, I think that that's one that would definitely go on the insurance list, I think. I was going to say top of the list. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, the 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 Gott portrait, which I think is absolutely wonderful, and has an identified uh, uh, artist as well, <clears throat> um, and the Betsy Carter portrait that's in the parlor. Uh, those are are, right. are paintings of, of some value. Just how much is hard to say. I think the Gott portrait could have some pretty good value. It's just stunning, and it's beautifully restored. Both of those were restored by. Uh, the conservator at Worcester Art Museum for us many years ago. Yeah. Um, and I have a feeling that this uh, this one that's coming into us is one that we should definitely consider a restoration project on. And I'm not sure, but I that might very well be something we could use CPA money for. Because they let them do stained glass windows and you know other stuff like that. I, I not anymore. I, Oh, yeah. Not anymore. 
<clears throat> um, that was because it was a church, right? Not no, it got too pricey. Oh, and and it got complicated. Yeah. Yeah. But it got, uh, it got way too pricey. They're just not doing them. Just too, too much. Where this would be owned by the town, I I I think it would be a, a definite possibility. Uh, restoration money for that could definitely come from that. Uh, and it does. It's not like it has to be this year or next year. It could be ten years down the road. Right. But uh, that's something I would definitely put on our list for the CPA long term. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that painting is 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 a doozy. It's just oh, yeah. wonderful. Uh, I I think it's a little bit tired in its current condition based on the picture that we saw. Uh, and uh, but it would be a great thing to put in the hands of a good conservator. Yep. She didn't give you any measurements, did she? I was just thinking we. I don't think so. We need appropriate protection. I don't think it. it I, it's not. I don't think it's very big. No, because there was a hand in the picture. It kind of gave you yeah. a. Yeah. I think it's done that. Yeah. Um, if it's more than. If it's significantly more than a foot square, I'd be surprised. <clears throat> Motion well, to adjourn. I'll move. Motion to adjourn is in as the second. Second. Agar I. June I, 12th. Elaine I.